Hi, my name is Larry and welcome to this episode of Learn It With Larry. And now you've opened your camera, inspected it, you've familiarized yourself with the input and output ports and now let's connect them to the network. So let me use my powers to get the power from the network. There you go! I have it! I have it right here and all I have to do now is connect that to our NVI POE port. And as you can see, it now powers on the camera. So the reason I said it's power over network is because it's basically POE. Now the unit comes with a 12 volt power supply as well if you don't wish to use the POE functionality of it. So you can supply direct DC power to that. But in our case right now, we want to make use of the PoE. So now I just connected the camera with a single cable that takes care of the power, the NDI video signal, and that also carries your other NDI functionalities like your tally, for example. Now the reason why I said I get the power from the network is because we are using PoE. Now take note that this camera comes with a DC power supply as well in the box when you purchase it. So if you don't want to use PoE or if you don't have a PoE switch, you can just use your regular DC power supply that comes with the box. But now since we have a PoE switch and you know we want to make use of it, now we are using a single cable that takes care of power, control, video and the tally coming from the camera and that brings that camera as a source into our live production. So now you've powered on your camera using PoE, you can now take the SDI or HDMI if you want to use it that way or in our case let's see the one, the control part and the NDI part of it as well. Now the Birdo camera has a web interface that lets you access the controls of this PTZ camera. Now to access that web interface, we have to go to our system. So let's have a look at the software. Now from our software right here, all we have to do is open your Google Chrome. So I'll open my Google Chrome. Now when you first open the system, you don't really know what's the IP address of it. Of course we know, it's in the manual, you can read it, it's there. But in case you don't know, there's a way to do it as well. So all you have to do is from your web browser, you type in HTTP uh, colon double slash bird dog dash the last five digits of your Mac address. So you will have that from the bottom of the camera. So you have your Mac address right here. So that's C93E5 for us. So bring it down and then type in dash c93e5.local. Hit that and that brings you to the web interface of your Bird Dog Eyes P200 PTZ camera. Now, password. Password is the default password is Bird Dog. And then there you have it. And that's it. You, that's your web interface for your bird dog. So from this dashboard right here, you will be able to see the firmware version of the camera, the serial number, the MAC address, or you also have the option to reboot the device from here or restart video from this part of the network. And now, we can now control our camera. One important tip that we want to tell you is that um, there is another software that we recommend that you download if you're using BirdDog PTZ cameras. And that is the BirdDog Cam Control. To access that, all you have to do is go to BirdDog website. So that's going to be bird-dog.tv and you are in your BirdDog website. Now, under the products, you will see that you have software right here and download cam control. So now that downloads the cam control to your system. Now, I don't have to download it because I already have that installed in my system. So all I have to do is open that software, go to my files, and I'll just click on Bird Dog Cam Control. So click yes. And now I'm in my bird dog cam control. Remember, your PTZ camera at this stage is now connected to your network. And all you have to do is click plus and it will automatically look at different bird dog cameras that are available as a source in your network. In our case right here, we only have one. So we have to select bird dog C93 E5 cam. And now it provides me 
this view. Now the cool thing about this, or one thing that I really love about this, is it doesn't just give you control, but also gives you a preview of what your camera output is. So if you have multiple bird dog PTZ cameras connected in your network, you'll be able to see all of them right here, lined up. And it doesn't just give you controls, but it also provides you a preview for you to use. It's mostly a confidence preview anyway, but it's really good. Now looking at the software, you'll see that I'll be able to adjust. I can tilt it, I can pan it, I can recall the settings that's available in here. I just press this and then I can run different presets that I've already set in the camera. So these are all available in our in our bird dog cam control. Now I want to go back to the software because one of the most important settings that you might want to look at when you first set up your bird dog is the configuration method of your network, of course. Again, when you look at your bird dog's web interface, you will see that under the network, you have this configuration method right here. So you have two options. So you can either set it as static IP network or a DHCP IP network. In most cases, if you're connecting it to a switch that's connected to a router that runs a DHCP server, then that's fine. You know, set it at DHCP. So the router will provide your switch and all the devices connected to it, its specific IP address, and that's being done automatically. In most cases, when you don't really use that kind of setup and you only have a switch that doesn't provide you an IP address, a dynamic IP address, what you can do is also set it as static. So you have controls of IP of individual components in your network. So in our case right here, we are using a DHCP server connected to our system, so we don't have to do that. If you notice, I just plug it in and then that's all connected to the network at once. This is where they say that NDI is you know, a very low configuration technology because if you're running DHCP in your network, it will right away be recognized and be provided with an IP address that makes it part of the network right away. Another interesting thing in the network conversation is the static fallback address. In cases wherein your network, the DHCP server fails, there's a static fallback address. So this is helpful as well that, you know, when you think of a backup or making sure that your network is still active or your sources are still active in your network, you can also look at the static feedback address available in this configuration. And finally, let's talk about the firmware update. Now, there are cases wherein Birdo would release a new feature and that will only be available when you update the firmware of your camera. So how do you do that? So again, when you go to the bird dog website, let's type in bird-dog.tv and from here, under support, you get firmware updates and here you will see the product support page that has the firmware update. So if I click the firmware updates, it will provide you with all the firmware versions of the product. So depending on what product you are trying to upgrade, there's a specific firmware in that. Now personally for me, I believe in saying that if it ain't broke, why fix it? So if your PTZ camera is working and you have no problems whatsoever, you don't have to update the firmware. You don't have to run a firmware update just because there's a new firmware update available in the system. So firmware updates mostly fixes bugs or there's a new feature that is made available with that specific package. But in most cases, if it's working properly, why do you have to bother fixing it? So you don't really have to do that. Now going back to the firmware update page, so you will see that there is a version P200 3.3 firmware available right here. So all you have to do is just download it and just follow the steps that will be given to you by that. Now if you need to roll back to a previous firmware version, then all you have to do is click on the previous firmware that's available right here. Additionally, there's another tool that's available which is the Bird Dog Neuralizer. Bird Dog Neuralizer basically helps you to reset your Bird Dog camera to its factory settings. How do you do that? So I just downloaded the Neuralizer right here and then I'm gonna run it. And then now it's here. So from here, all I have to do is I have to say that, okay, I'm using the network adapter, the ethernet, and now it will tell you which camera will be seen 
in the network. Now, the product urealizer is only advised as a last step, mostly by your local support representative to you know set your camera back to its factory settings. Have a look at that. So in case there's a need for it. Now that's about it. We're done with this episode. So in this episode, we've talked about connecting your PTZ camera, your Birdog P200 to your network, opened up the web interface. I've shown you the cam control as additional software that you might want to install in your system, how to update the firmware, and some troubleshooting steps using the Neuralizer. I hope you find this episode helpful. And again, if you have more questions about this, specific camera you know how to reach us again my name is larry thank you for watching <laughs>